This is part 80 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to write the deadlock information to the SQL Server error log. This is continuation to part 79, so please watch part 79 before proceeding. By default, the deadlock information is not returned to the error log. When deadlocks occur, SQL Server chooses one of the transactions as the deadlock victim and rolls it back. There are several ways in SQL Server to track down the queries that are causing deadlocks. One of the options is to use the SQL Server trace flag 1222 to write the deadlock information to the SQL Server error log. For that to happen, we must first turn on that trace flag. In SQL Server, there are two options to turn on trace flags. We can do that either by using SQL Server startup parameters or by using SQL Server DBCC commands as you can see here. These trace flags can be set at two levels. They can be set either at the global level or at a specific session level. The first command here is turning on the trace flag 1222 at the global level. So the second parameter minus one indicates that the trace flag must be set at the global level. If we omit this minus one parameter, then the trace flag will be set only at the session level. To check the status of the trace flag, use trace status and to turn it off, use trace off. Again, if you specify the second parameter minus one, it will be turned off at the global level. If you omit that, it will be turned off at the session level. Let's look at this in action. So first, let's go ahead and turn it on at the session level. To check the status, let's use trace status. Notice that status is set to one, meaning 1222 is turned on, but it's only turned on at the session level. Let's turn it off. And now let's enable it at the global level. And to enable it at the global level, we're using that second parameter minus one. Now let's check the status. Notice that it's enabled at the global level now. At this point, if there are any deadlocks, the information about those deadlocks will be captured in the error log. And then we can look at that error log and see what transactions are causing those deadlocks. So let's go ahead now and write some code to cause deadlocks. For this, I'm going to use the code that we worked with in part 78. So this code is going to create two tables, table A and table B. I have also created two stored procedures, SP transaction one and SP transaction two. Both of these stored procedures are trying to update both the tables, table A and table B. The only difference is, you know, the first stored procedure is updating table A first and then table B. And the second stored procedure is doing it in the reverse order. It's updating table B first and then table A. And in between both the update statements, there is a delay of five seconds. So at this point, if we execute these two stored procedures from two different sessions, that is from two different connections, then, you know, they are going to cause a deadlock. Let's look at that in action now. So let's first execute stored procedure one and then simultaneously stored procedure two. So after a few seconds, one transaction should succeed and the other one should roll back. And this transaction two here is made the deadlock victim. And look at that, we get that 1205 error. So the information about this deadlock should now be captured in the error log. So the obvious next question is how to read the error log. For that, we are going to make use of the system store procedure, sp underscore read error log. So let's go ahead and read that. Execute sp underscore read error log. And notice that from here, the information about the deadlock starts. In our next video, we'll discuss how to read and understand this deadlock information that we have in the error log. Thank you for listening and have a great day.